Raihan sudut doesn't seem complete. Maybe I just share with him. Raihan. Uh. Okay, Ustazah. So, um, before we go into the technicalities of wudu, perhaps can you share with the viewers uh, what is wudu and why is it so important in our religion? Uh, that's a great question. So, some scholars have said that wudu comes from the Arabic word wada'ah, which means good and beautiful. Wudu, as we learn it in the religion, it means to purify ourselves by washing specific parts of our body in a specific way uh, before we can perform certain rituals. Wudu is also a requirement uh, for many acts of worship, such as performing tawaf, uh, umrah, uh, holding on to the most half and of course um, what we do every single day which is to perform the five daily prayers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran um, O believers if you are rising up to pray then wash your faces and your arms up to your elbows and wipe your head and wash your feet up to your ankles from here we understand that Islam is a religion of cleanliness we pray five times a day and we need to purify ourselves and the Prophet sallallahu has taught us this At-Tahuru Shatrul Iman So from this hadith we can learn that Cleanliness is closely linked with our faith. In other words, it's a holistic term that requires us to purify our outward self as well as our inward self. So Ustaza, noting that there are quite a vast differences of opinions between scholars regarding the way on how to take wudu, um, can you share with us the steps on how to take wudu according to the madhab of Imam Ash-Shafi'i? Before we take wudu, uh, because wudu is to be clean, right, and it's cleanliness, we have to ensure that we remove any impurities from our clothes, uh, our body, our skin, um, and also the place that we intend to uh, perform the worship later after the wudu. And it also uh, includes things that may prevent water from reaching your skin. Mm. So for ladies, if you're wearing waterproof uh, skincare products, lip gloss, makeup, nail polish, uh, peel off nail polish, whatever it is, we have to remove that so that the water can touch our skin. Uh, what about for men, Ustaz? Well, as for men, um, I believe hair ointments is okay. But if the gel or the product uh, would prevent water from reaching to the scalps of our hairs, Perhaps it's better for us to clean first to ensure that water do reach our hands. So after we've made sure that everything is cleaned, mm -hmm. um, we have to make the intention, also known as niyat. So the intention is what we make to um, remove impurities, ritual impurities, and also to take the wudu itself. Uh, and there's no verbal expression, you don't have to say it in a certain language. Um, but it is very important that you have that intention in your heart. So the first thing that we actually do when we take the wudu is to wash your face. Um, and it is a good practice, it is a sunnah to wash three times. So for ladies, we just wash our face and the face is um, where uh, the hairline starts and then all the way to where your little ears are and then all the way down to under the chin. I'm sure men also have same, you know, <laughs> facial dimensions but uh, I'm curious about facial hair for men. So for example, if their facial hairs are quite uh, thick to a point where if you stand in front of that person, you are unable to see the skin uh, below the hair, the facial hairs. It's important for the person to actually rub the uh, facial hair and ensure that water reach. That's really great. Like if you have volume, then you have to do more steps. Exactly. Right? After we wash our face, we have to wash our arms up to the elbow, and it is best that you extend a little bit. In fact, I believe uh, it's a sunnah, right? So that to start from our uh, right and then to our left. Mm. It goes all the way with our next um, uh, steps in wudu as well, right? Yes, three times the right and then three times the left. After washing the arms, we go on to not wash the head, but rather to take some water and swipe or wipe your head with the water that is already on your palm. And for ladies, if we are outdoors um, and we don't have a private space to take wudu, it is quite fine to uh, lift up your inner a little bit and insert your wet palm into uh, between the inner and your, your scalp and rub 
um, at least three strands of hair on your head and it would be valid for this wiping of head. As for men, perhaps they are, you know, ababang that have already styled up their hair. Uh, it's okay if they want to maintain their hair styles. At least what you can do is to ensure that you wipe by the sides of your hair. So it fulfills the three uh, strands of hair according to the Mahathab Imam Shafi'i. Although saying that, it's best if you are able to wipe water to the entire of our heads, including some parts of your ears as well. And that is best. So after we're done with the head, we clean our ears. Uh, and this is actually a sunnah. It's not obligatory, but it's a plus. It's an upgrade to your wudu to clean your ears. Just wet our hands with clean water and also swipe the outer and inner part of the ear and you're done. So for ladies as well, if you're wearing the hijab and you're outside and you cannot remove the hijab, you can insert your hand in between the hijab uh, and, and your skin and do that or you can leave it out. Your wudu will still be valid. And finally, wash your feet up to your ankles and this washing it's not taking some water to wipe like the head and the ears but to put the feet under the running water up to the ankles that would complete the steps of wudu for you to start your worship although saying that i believe it's a sunnah for us to rub our legs it's the same for our hands as well, right, Saza? Yes, to do the rubbing, a little bit of massaging. It does give us like a refresher and a wake up. What about Muslims who want to take wudu at public toilets? What can you share with us um, regarding that? This is a fantastic question because I get this question a lot from the sisters. You can neatly take the wudu in, in the sink area. And for the feet, um, I, I wouldn't advise you to like lift your leg up to the sink but rather have a container to fill water and go inside the cubicle to wash your feet above the toilet bowl so that the water flows nicely into the toilet or if there is a bidet which a lot of places now have uh, alhamdulillah then you can use the bidet make sure it's not like spraying out too uh, too much pressure too fast um, and then gently wash your feet and immediately take some toilet paper or have a little towel to dry your feet so you don't go on to wet the whole entire floor. And even if um, the cubicles are all occupied, what you can do is actually just get a little bit of water and then ensure that the water reaches your leg. You can rub that all over your legs up to your ankle. Uh, so that's a very important reminder from Saza to not just only be mindful in your wudu but also to be mindful of your surroundings as well to ensure that you don't put it on harm's way on other people while you are doing ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, it's just to ensure that all of those that are mentioned by Ustaza to be done in the mentioned order, which is also known as tertib. Yeah, you can't like take the feet first and then go to the face. It has to be very specific in that specific uh, steps and specific order for the wudu to be valid. Perhaps there are others who would like to gain more rewards in taking wudu. Are there sunnahs relating to wudu? Yes, of course. There are more uh, more rewards that can be reaped by practicing certain sunnahs while taking wudu. So the first part is the sunnahs that we do before taking wudu, uh, and this is uh, something that a lot of us know, which is to say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, uh, and also to recite the ta'awuz. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Make sure your hands are clean. Wash your hands before you start taking the wudu uh, and you can also clean your nose. Inhale some water into your nose and expel it and also to gargle to clean your mouth. Okay, And while we are at the topic of cleaning the mouth, it is also a sunnah to brush your teeth. So you can use your toothbrush, you can carry your toothbrushes with you everywhere or you can use this thing called siwak. And the Prophet ﷺ used to use siwak a lot and he used to use it as well before taking wudu. And then during wudu, to save water when we are taking wudu because the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith um, where there was a conversation and someone asked the Prophet ﷺ, is there extravagance with water in wudu? And the Prophet ﷺ answered, Yes, even if you were on the banks of a flowing river. After taking wudu, it is a sunnah to read this dua. Um, and the Prophet ﷺ used to read this dua as well. And it goes like this. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa la sharika lah. 
wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Allahumma ij'alni minat tawwabin wa ij'alni minal mutatahhirin wa ij'alni min ibadikas salihin Do remember to make your dua after going out of the toilet and not inside of the toilet There is one more sunnah after taking wudu which is to perform two rak'ahs of sunnah prayers after taking wudu This is called the sunnah of wudu prayers Definitely this is one of the recommended sunnahs by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said in the hadith he who performs ablution like this ablution of mine and then stood up for prayer and offered two rak'at of prayer without allowing his thoughts to be distracted all his previous sins are removed on that note sasa can you share with us um, what are the significance and benefits of taking wudu Number one is the removal of sins and impurities. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, if anyone performs the wudu well, his sins will come out from his body, even coming out from under his nails. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala is forgiving us as the wudu water droplets fall from us. Another benefit of taking wudu is to attain Allah's love. And this is mentioned in Surah At-Taubah, Wallahu yuhibbul muttahhirin, which means Allah loves those who purify themselves. The third one is this, and I really like this one because it is uh, to attain illumination on the day of resurrection. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that my people will be called upon on the day of resurrection with a mark and this mark which illuminates their faces by the effects of wudu so whoever is able to extend their mark of illumination uh, let him do so so definitely there are a lot of benefits in taking wudu but ultimately our focus should be to seek the pleasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you share with us how is it possible for us to maintain the state of wudu without nullifying it? In fact, what are the things that can nullify our wudu? So, there are four things that could nullify the wudu. The first one, when anything at all exits either the front or the rear of your private parts. Number two, is when someone becomes unconscious if the sleep is a very brief one and you are actually seated down when you are sleeping then it would not invalidate your wudu another thing that would invalidate your wudu is skin to skin contact with your spouse or a person of the opposite gender who is not your mahram and the final thing that would invalidate your wudu is touching a human private part with your palm so those are the rulings for the general circumstances. However, there are some conditions which requires us to make some adjustments. For example, people who are sick, where water are unable to reach their skin. And perhaps people who are traveling, where they are unable to find water. For these specific conditions, you can find them in modules from Adil, such as Fiqih for the Sick, Travelers Fiqih, and Fardu Ain. While we are doing our ibadah in taking wudu, let us also remember to be mindful in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every moment water reaches our skin, every moment we change from one rukun to another is a form or an opportunity for us to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would also like to add that um, we shouldn't feel intimidated if we have never taken wudu before. It's really not that complicated. Uh, all we have to do is take the first step and start learning, start doing, practice it and it will get easier inshallah.